I'm super excited, y'all, because today I'm going to present you with a Farrow & Ball color that is beautiful. It's called Sulking Room Pink, which is actually a bit of a peculiar name, but it does carry some historical significance. But I gotta tell ya, there's no way you'll catch me sulking when talking about this color, because it's sleek, and it's a beautiful muted rose. For those of you that are new to the paint people, we talk all about painting and decorating. And in these videos, I'm going to give you a featured overview on color code number 295 by Pharaoh and Ball, Sulking Room Pink. And my loyal subscribers watching will know that my favorite part of these videos is the color palette that I build around it. So not only are you going to have all the technical information about this color, but you'll also have other paint colors that you can use alongside it in your home so you have a really wonderful color scheme to build off of. If that sounds good to you, then let's get right into the video. Also, a like would be nice too. I don't know why I do like a small thumb for likes. So Sulking Room Pink, it's supposed to be evocative of the French boudoirs of the past, I think, where someone would have a space where they can not just sulk in, but also collect their thoughts and perhaps decompress a little bit. It's not a color that you immediately think of when you picture relaxation, especially in more modern times. I think I tend to gravitate towards those bluey green colors when I want some serenity, but I can totally see the appeal of a color like Sulking Room Pink. One thing I really relate to is feeling a little more cozy in areas with darker colors and richer paint colors in general. I don't necessarily like being surrounded by them 24 seven, but in a place like an office or especially a bedroom, I really enjoy dark colors because I'm all about those dark cozy cave vibes when I want to wind down and reflect or sleep. So Sulking Room Pink is actually quite a bit darker than it may seem, especially online. The number we look for when determining how dark a color is, is the LRV or the light reflectance value. But as far as I know, Fair One Ball doesn't really advertise this number on their website, but I would estimate it to be around maybe the 25 or 30% range. That means that Sulking Room Pink as a color reflects about 25 or 30% of the light that hits it, which is kind of in the bottom chunk of paint colors, darkness wise. Barrow and Ball describes it as a romantic and muted rose. Not to be seen as overtly pink, but rather a muted rose with enormous warmth. And I think that warmth comes from a bit of red but overall it feels like a somewhat blackened mauve that is a bit desaturated. It almost feels like it has a bit of a brown base to it, so it won't feel overly saturated. Now clearly there is that rosy element to it, so not necessarily going to feel brown in practical use, but there's enough of it where it's not going to be overly bright, vibrant, and perhaps obnoxious. The color is meant to feel contemplative, and to me, it would lose that element if it was any more dynamic and vibrant. So I think they did a really good job there. Because of its undertone, tones being a little different, I guess, and it's darkness as well, this is a paint color that I would see thriving in those sectioned off parts of your home. So don't think of this as necessarily a hallway color for your front foyer, necessarily. <laughs> this is a great color for separate rooms within a home, maybe even one room in particular. And I also seeing it being used quite often in more accent form as well. So maybe on one feature wall in some cases. But honestly, you can use it on all the walls in a space pretty effectively in conjunction with other lighter surrounding colors like maybe your ceiling or your flooring, perhaps your bedding I would recommend to be lighter as well, just so you have a nice sense of balance in the space. It's not just dark, dark, dark. Now the colors that I would recommend to go alongside Sulking Room Pink are a little more on the neutral side of things, just because of that strong use of Dusty Rose in that main color we're talking about. So I have for you a gray based white, a warmer light gray as a wall color choice, a mid-tone grayish for something a little more deep, and a beautiful charcoal as the final color in this palette. So let's get into these colors right away, starting with the white pairing. It's called Strong White. <laughs> and what I like about it is it has that soft amount of pleasant gray that gives Sulking Room Pink a little bit more of a complimentary twist. Normally you'll see it paired with either plain whites or more traditional creamy tints, but I'm going with a very, very light gray, which gives that red warmth in Sulking Room Pink 
to become a little more prominent and featured. I also think it's fun to deviate from those bright sterile whites whenever you're pairing with more deep saturated colors like this one. You don't have to go with the lightest and brightest white to see that contrast because the color you're starting with has a lot of depth to it. So that's why my white paint color choice is a little more of an off-white. The light paint color is similar in depth to strong white, but this one introduces a little more warmth as an alternative. It's called Skimming Stone. And although this color is warmer, it's still not in creamy territory because it does feel substantiated with that light gray undertone. Not quite a grayish, although it does have a little bit of beige warmth to it. It almost feels a little closer to taupe to me or having kind of a brown based warmth, which you find in a lot of the more earthier neutrals that exist, including this one. I love this color in conjunction with Sulking Room Pink because the two play off each other so perfectly. This is a great wall color choice if you want, let's say, three neutral walls in your bedroom, for example, and then have a dusty rose wall behind your headboard. That's a classic choice in your bedroom is just to paint the headboard wall, the different accent feature color, Mwah. It's gonna look great. Another option is take skimming stone and put it in your primary bathroom and then have your primary bedroom painted with sulking room pink all over. For a slightly darker alternative to skimming stone, you could use drop cloth, which is definitely more saturated. It has a little bit of beige warmth, which pushes it towards the yellowy side of things rather than an earthy brown undertone. It also just feels a little more substantial as a mid-tone paint color. Drop cloth is a little closer to sulking room pink in terms of how dark it is, so they will be able to play off each other a little more equally. Just be aware though that if you're developing a space with these colors, you won't really have a light color to help reflect light back into the space. So you're just doubling down on the darker colors. If that's what you're into, no problem. It usually won't be an issue if you have a pretty good amount of lighting, whether it's from windows or light bulbs, but maybe not a perfect choice in kind of a dull, dimly lit basement. I'd prefer skimming stone or even strong white for those darker spaces in your home. Speaking of dark, our next color pairing is one of the newer colors by Pharaoh and Bulk. This is a beautiful charcoal gray that is sort of in between the colors railings and downpipe, which are other mega popular colors by the company. Essentially what you're getting here is a kind of cool off black with just the slightest hint of green, but it's barely noticeable, especially in practical use. Black never goes out of style. That's why I've been wearing it more often these days. And to me, neither will off black. You can't go wrong either way, really. Before you do anything, however, you gotta check out Pharaoh Ball's brand new colors, including Hopperhead, right over here. There's 11 of them and we talked all about them in this video. Check it out.